Hey everyone, in this video we're looking at stacks of kinematics graphs. In other words, a position, velocity, and acceleration graph that all correlate to the same motion. So for each example we go through, we're going to take a look at a cart moving along a track, then we'll draw a velocity graph of that motion, and then a corresponding position and acceleration graph. Let's take a look at our first example, which is a cart moving forward at a constant speed. Here you can see the cart moving forward, it's not getting any faster or any slower. So let's start with the velocity graph. And in our velocity graph, we've got zero velocity, which corresponds to the horizontal axis. We've got positive velocity up here, and then negative velocity down here. Which means that, remember, the zero velocity is as slow as you can go. The slowest you can go is not at all. So the farther we get away from the zero, this axis right here, the faster we're moving. So that could be up here we're moving fast, down here we're moving fast, but if we're close to this axis, we're close to a zero velocity, we're moving very slow. So keep that in mind in all these examples that we look at. In this example, the cart was moving forward or moving in the positive direction. So we're gonna start our graph up here somewhere in the positive velocity and just extend it over. And it's gonna be a horizontal line because that velocity or that speed is staying constant. So we get a horizontal graph like that for velocity. Now our position is changing. Let's assume that the left side of the track is a position of zero and we're moving forward or in the positive direction as we go, which is corresponding to the upper part of this axis right here. So we're starting at a position zero or close to zero right there and then we move in the positive direction and so we're going to end up somewhere like up here at a more positive position and we're moving at a constant speed so the rate of change of our position in other words, how fast we go is staying constant. So we're gonna get a linear position graph connecting those two points. If the cart were speeding up or slowing down, we would get a curved position graph. And we'll see that in our other examples in this video. Now finally, let's talk about the acceleration. Now acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. It's how quickly are you getting faster or how quickly are you slowing down? Or in this case, we're not speeding up or slowing down. We're staying at a constant speed, which means that our acceleration is zero. So we're just gonna shade in this axis right there, the zero acceleration. Now I wanna point out something on these graphs. It's kind of a pattern that you can look for. Our position graph was linear, and that corresponds to the equation y equals cx, or y equals mx plus b. Our velocity graph then was a constant, so it corresponds to y equals a constant. Whatever that velocity was, five centimeters per second, I don't know. So if we have a linear position graph, our next graph down, our velocity graph, will just be a constant constant velocity. And then if our velocity is constant, then our acceleration graph will be zero. In other words, y equals zero. And that pattern's always gonna be true. If we have a linear position graph, our next graph down is constant, our next graph down is zero. Look for a similar pattern when we get to example two, where we have the cart getting faster. All right, so here's example two. In this case, the cart is moving forward, but it's getting faster, it's speeding up. So let's take a look at this. The cart's moving, it's getting faster and faster and faster, and by the end, it's moving pretty quick. So let's start with our velocity graph again. At the very beginning of the motion, it wasn't really moving yet. It took just a moment to get it started moving. So we're starting from a velocity of zero in this case. So we're gonna start by making a dot there at the zero, and then it's getting faster, and it's getting faster in the positive direction. So by the end of our motion, we're gonna have a dot somewhere up here. And then for our velocity graph, we're just gonna connect those two dots. Now the velocity graph is gonna be linear because this is what we call uniformly accelerating motion. The rate at which it's getting faster is consistent throughout the motion. So we connect those two dots and there's our velocity graph. And that's showing that we're starting slow. In other words, the velocity graph is close to a zero velocity. And then that velocity graph is moving away from the zero velocity in the positive direction. It's getting faster and faster and faster. Now what's our position graph gonna look like? Well, our position graph is gonna be curved. And before we draw it, I wanna show you something that I find that a lot of students find helpful. Do this, start by drawing a circle and then divide that circle into four different parts with a vertical line and a horizontal line. Your position time graph will look like one of the four sections of this circle. Those are the four options that you have for a curved position graph. So I'm gonna redraw that as curved position graphs like this. See how that kind of forms a circle? This position graph is gonna be one of those four. So I've found that students find this helpful to be able to look at these four graphs and be like, okay, it's one of these, let's think about which one corresponds to the motion that we're looking at. We're starting with a slow velocity. The velocity is zero or close to zero at the beginning. So at the very beginning here, we're gonna have a very shallow sloped position graph because it's not changing position. It's not moving on the vertical axis very much at the beginning as time passes. So we'll start with the graph kind of like that, where it's, 
increasing its position, but pretty slowly. And it's a shallow graph right there. Then as we go on, it's getting faster, right? The cart's moving faster than it was. So our position graph is gonna be a little bit steeper. So I can draw the next little section right there. Notice how this line is a little bit steeper. It's changing position a little bit more per second than it was. And I drew it up higher because I know this is gonna be kind of a curved continuous shape. And then as we keep going farther, we're getting faster and faster. This is gonna be even steeper at the end right there. And so we can clearly see kind of this curve. It's gonna to correspond to this graph right there. And I can connect that with the smooth curved line to show our position graph. So that position graph is showing that we're moving slow at the beginning in the positive direction. Then we're moving faster in the positive direction. It's a steeper slope of that graph. And then we're moving really fast in the positive direction as the slope gets steeper on our position graph. Now let's jump down to the acceleration graph. In this case for the acceleration, we're just gonna look at the slope of the velocity. This velocity graph has a positive slope. That means that our acceleration is positive. Also, the slope of that velocity graph is constant. Whatever that slope is, it's the same slope throughout the whole line. And so our acceleration graph is a constant. Each of these graphs is a slope of the previous graph. So the velocity shows us the slope of the position graph. Think about it. Here the slope is zero, zero velocity. Here the slope's a little bit bigger, so our number for our velocity is a little bit bigger. Here our slope's really big, so our amount of velocity is really big. Same thing for acceleration. Here the slope of the acceleration is some positive number, so we have a positive acceleration. Here the slope of the velocity graph, well, it's the same slope still, so we have the same acceleration value. Also take note of this. Our position graph was a quadratic, so it kind of follows the pattern y equals x squared. And then our velocity graph was linear, so like y equals a constant times x, that's a linear graph. And then our acceleration was just y equals a constant. And so it follows that same pattern here. If our position graph is curved, it's a quadratic. Therefore, our velocity graph must be linear. And therefore, our acceleration is constant. And if we follow the pattern we kept going, whatever's after acceleration would be zero. The next one after acceleration is actually called jerk, but generally that's not covered in an introductory physics class. And true story, jerk is the next level and then snap and then crackle and then pop. I'm not making that up. It's a real thing. Go look it up on Wikipedia. Position, velocity, acceleration, jerk, snap, crackle, pop. Now I want some Rice Krispies. All right, here's our third example. In a third example, we have a cart moving backward and this time it's gonna be getting faster again. Here it is, it's moving backward. It's getting faster and faster and faster as it moves backward. Okay, the big difference here is we're not moving in the forward direction anymore. We're moving in the negative direction. At the beginning though, it was stopped. It wasn't moving yet. So we're still starting with a zero velocity and I can indicate that on my velocity graph with a dot right there. Now it's moving backwards, it's getting faster. So instead of going up in this positive side of the velocity graph, I'm gonna be down in the negative side of the velocity graph. It's gonna be getting faster and faster and faster. It's actually gonna slope downward like this, which is faster. Remember, the slowest that I can move is zero. So if it's down here on my velocity graph, that's actually moving faster. So I end up with the dot down right there, and then I connect those with a straight line, and I get a graph like this. All right, next let's take a look at our position graphs. Let's draw out our aids there for us to, to take a look at. Now at the very beginning, our velocity was zero. So on my position graph, I'm gonna have a, a pretty horizontal line to show that it's got a velocity of zero. The slope of the position is gonna be close to zero. I don't wanna start that at the bottom of my position graph though, because I'm gonna be moving in the negative direction. I've got negative velocities. So I wanna start here at some positive position. Also, if you think about it on the track, we define the left side of the track as zero. That means if I'm on the right side of the track, I've got some positive position. So I'm gonna start up here. As I go, now it looks like I'm moving faster, but in the negative direction. So I should be steeper, this time kind of sloping down like this. To show that I'm moving fast, but it's sloped down because I'm moving in the negative direction. So steep means fast, and then sloped in the negative direction means that I'm moving in the negative direction. And then finally at the end, I'm moving even faster in the negative direction. So it's sloped down even more. I take my pen and connect those with a smooth line like that. It corresponds with one of my four options here, this one right here. And again, this shows that I'm moving slowly in the negative direction, because it's got a negative slope, and I'm getting faster and faster because this graph is getting steeper and steeper. Now for the acceleration, it doesn't matter that I'm getting faster. You may think that since the cart's moving faster, it's got a positive acceleration but it's moving faster in the negative direction. So the acceleration is actually negative. Regardless of that though, here's an easy way to determine if the acceleration is positive or negative. 
look at your velocity graph. Is this a positive or negative slope? It's a negative slope, so your acceleration is negative. And that slope is also constant, so I'm gonna have a constant negative acceleration, so I'll start down here, and I'll have a horizontal line. And again, this follows the same pattern. This one's curved like a quadratic, this one's linear, and then this one is constant. So always curved, linear, constant. Or if the velocity were constant, you've got linear, constant, zero. And if you happen to be in calculus, we're taking the derivative of the function each time we go down. And each time we go up, we're taking the integral or the antiderivative to get from acceleration to velocity to position. All right, let's take a look at one more example. In this example, we have a cart moving forward, but it's getting slower. So let's take a look at this. The cart is moving forward, but it's getting slower and slower, and then it kind of stops at the end there. All right, so let's start with our velocity graph. The cart is moving forward. At the very beginning of the motion, it's already moving forward. So it starts with a really fast, positive velocity. So instead of starting my velocity graph at zero, I'm gonna start up somewhere up here because it's moving in the positive direction fast at the beginning. And then it's slowing down, it's getting slower. So that velocity graph is gonna approach zero. At the end, we saw that it came to a stop. So we'll have a dot somewhere here at the end where the velocity returns to zero. And then we'll connect those with a straight line because we've got a constant acceleration. Let's get our aids on the board there. All right, now for our position graph, because we're starting with a positive velocity, we're gonna start with a steep slope this time. The cart was on the left side of the track, so the cart was at a position of zero or close to zero. It's moving fast at the beginning, so I'm gonna start steep. In the previous examples, we started shallow and got steeper. This time we're gonna start steep, and then we'll get shallower as we slow down. So I'll draw that right there, it's pretty steep. We're gonna have a point a little bit farther along where now it's moving slower. It's got a less positive velocity. So I'm gonna have a less steep line right there. And then as I go farther, it's gonna be getting slower. And then finally at the end, it's barely moving at all. And so I've got a pretty much horizontal line right there. I can take that and draw a smooth curve through them. And there's my position graph. It shows me moving in the positive direction. I start fast and then I get slower and slower and slower to at the end, my position or vertical is barely changing at all. Finally, acceleration, really all you gotta think about is what's the slope of the velocity graph? The slope of the velocity graph is negative and it's a constant slope. So I've got a constant negative acceleration right here. All right, so that's how you take some motion. All right, so that's how you take an example of uniformly accelerating motion and then draw a velocity, position, and acceleration graph to match that motion. Now it's time to go check my house to see if I have any Rice Krispies to experience some uh, snap crackle and pop. I'm not really sure if those have a lot of like conceptual meaning or not. Maybe some engineers out there can leave me a comment below and let me know.